Verse 7, be not deceived. Okay, this one you want to mark down. This, the, the three verses are probably the most important verses in all of your Galatians, uh, in all the Galatians studies. These are the three important verses. Be not deceived. Don't be fooled. God is not mocked. Ooh, you're mocking God of something. On what? For whatsoever a man soweth, whatever you sow in your life, that shall he also reap. You're going to reap it. Okay, what does that mean? What that means is this, is that how many of you have ever heard of the law of sowing and reaping, right? So law of sowing and reaping. So let's say this guy, because he's lazy and know-it-all, then he takes all the stuff from Bible-believing preachers, and then he turns 60 pale white and then trolling people online, critiquing. And then what he wants to do is that now that he's spoiled and rotten, raised up on high, what he's doing now is that he's sowing discord, right? Blah, 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 looking like this, like blah, 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 all the time. And then he's critiquing, critiquing, and critiquing. Well, what happens is, whatever you're sowing, so you know a sower, they sow seeds, right? When you sow, what's going to happen at the end? You have to reap. So something's going to come out. So you sow in bad seeds, guarantee you're going to reap. You're going to gain bad fruit. Well, I don't want the bad fruit, Pastor. No, you have to. You have to reap it. So whatever fruit is down here, you must reap it in return. Thus, whatever you sow, so let's say gossip, critique, and pride, then what happens? You're going to reap that. And that's why you reap it in return with people critiquing you. I've seen that never failing all the time. The Lord always does that. You've seen how our enemies attacked our ministry, and you've seen how they reaped what they sowed, right? All right, the Lord takes care of it. So the thing is this, is that that's why you got to be careful. Too much smoking, then what do you reap? See, lung cancer. Drinking too much, what do you reap? Cirrhosis and liver. Act di disobedient to parents and rebellious, what are you going to reap? Hey, you can't escape it, okay? It's genetics. <laughs> so you're going to reap that in return with your children. That's why sometimes uh, parents, you get frustrated when you raise your kids. Why? Because you know you're reaping what you've sown. They a lot of times picture and mirror you. So the thing is this, this is, that's why it's so important, be very careful. If you think that you can get away with it, criticizing us Bible-believing preachers online, God is not mocked. And you better be scared about that. If you want to laugh it off and critique me for saying that, you go ahead, your time will come. Because I wouldn't dare do that if I were you. Me, I'm, I scare God. I'm scared of God more than men. I fear God more than men. So I, I know who my maker and judge is. So I'm going to have to be very quiet and be very careful. So you understand this is that gossip, critiquing others, sowing sin, fornication, drug addiction, being rebellious, all of that, you have to reap. If you think you, remember this, you will never you will never, you will never get away with this. Pastor, stop scaring me. No, you should be scared. This is the most important passage out of the whole Galatian study because this is a law right here. It's called the law of sowing and reaping. It's, a, it's an unbreakable law. You cannot change this. It's as strong as eternal security, sowing and reaping. Because this even applies to lost people too, not just Christians. It applies to every single individual. You have to read what you've sown. If you think you escape, if you think you escape, then you know what that is? That's mocking God. Remember that. You are mocking God every time you keep doing blah, 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 and then sinning and what you're looking at, what you're hearing, what you're tasting. Remember this, you are mocking God because when you committed that sin, you don't think that you're going to reap, huh? That's evidence you're mocking God. The evidence that you're mocking God is when you're sowing those sins, you are thinking you can get away with it. And that's mocking God. So quiet. We want to jump to the next verse, right? Yeah, so let's jump to the next verse. So scary. 
For he that soweth to his flesh. See, if you sow to your flesh here, so all these bad seeds you're sowing, it's to your flesh. Flesh, flesh, flesh. We want to please ourselves, right? That's just, the worst enemy is actually not the devil. It's your flesh. It's yourself, man. This is the worst enemy. This thing just keeps crying out. Eh, 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 eh. And because it just keeps crying that out, you just always have to feed it all the time, right? This wicked flesh. He that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh, what? Reap corruption. You're going to reap corruption. Cirrhosis in the liver for drinking too much alcohol. You're going to have bad children if you lived as a bad child yourself. Lung cancer, smoking too much, etc., etc. Let's keep reading right here. But he that soweth to the Spirit... Okay, finally I'm going to tell you something positive that will just make you very happy, okay? He that soweth to the Spirit. If you sow to the Spirit, however, so not flesh. Let's say now you sow to the Spirit. And that's the red color right here. See? God using you, right? This is all of God. So let's say that this is of the Spirit now. He that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap what? Notice right here, life everlasting. All right, now... Before I cover some of these points right here, let me explain this. So first, some people might get confused thinking that this has to do with us getting everlasting salvation uh, by doing good works, by sowing good seeds, right? That's what it seems like. So I want to get rid of that misconception. What this verse is saying is that, okay, so we already have everlasting life within us, but when we sow more, we want to reap more of that life everlasting. We want to increase it. We want it to grow more. Because you've got to realize this. You have eternal life in heaven, but don't you want that eternal life to be increased even more? With more rewards, more rulership, more inheritance, more of eternity, see? So that's why when you see this preacher talking about losing eternity to save Christians, I'm not talking about losing your salvation. If I'm speaking to saved Christians about what you're going to lose for eternity, I'm talking about within this phrase, within this category and level, all the other things that you could have got with everlasting life. You have everlasting life right now, but don't you want it more? Everlasting life, you must understand, can be increased. It can be increased. Look at John chapter 10. So keep your hand at Galatians 6. Look at John chapter 10. This is very comforting, which will make up for the bad news that you've heard all this time, all right? So what's extremely comforting, you must understand, is that Jesus Christ, man, this is a great thing. You don't realize, friend, what, you're missing, uh, what you've gained. When you receive Jesus Christ for your salvation, that should not be the saddest day in your life. It is the greatest event ever. Because your soul got saved from hell, you're going to go to heaven with God for all eternity, but it's also the beginning of a new life. The beginning of earning gold, silver, precious stones. The beginning of experiencing God's blessings of peace, joy, and His love. Seeing His miracles through answered prayers. God using Romans 8.28 in your life, doing miracles. It's the beginning of getting an inheritance of all things. It's, a, it's the beginning of a beautiful life. You got to understand this, is that what the churches are preaching about with their lovey-dovey gospel about, you know, you'll be happy, you'll be blessed. A lot of that is true. Christianity is filled with so much positive things in life that you're going to be smile, smiling bigger than Joel Osteen to see how positive it is. That's how positive Christian life is. The only problem is Joel Osteen, he doesn't show you the negative side, right? So you got to understand this. God just does not only give you so much negativity. He also gives you so much positivity than you ever think as well. So you got to understand how great God is to your life. Look at John chapter 10. Man, do you realize what happened when you got saved? John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. See, that's the world, the flesh, and the devil. Those guys are thieves, 
robbing your years. All those years you're spending time on sin and what pleases you, the world and the flesh and the devil has stolen your time, stolen your opportunity. How many times have I read through Dr. Rotman's commentary that he said, if you're young, this is the best time to serve God. You don't want to waste what you have right now. It's your best time. I am come, so that's the thief, but now let's see Jesus. I am come that they might have life, but just life? No, keep reading. And that they might have it what? More abundantly. Isn't that beautiful? It's a great verse. God wants to give you so many things. Uh, if you never heard of this sermon, I'd recommend for you to listen to it. I recommended it quite often. It's called Trying to Live Through Life. Trying to Live Through Life. I would recommend you to listen to that sermon. It shows you what a great life it is that God has blessed you with and why you're not that happy. There's a lot of reasons why you're not that happy. So just listen to that sermon. It might help you on that one. Okay, let's return to our main text, Galatians. Let's look at the book of Galatians, chapter 6. Galatians, chapter 6. Verse 8 again. He that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So, just like this is a law for corruption, it's a law for also this one as well. And you can never break it. There's one, you can never escape God's judgment. But here's another thing too, friend. You can never escape God's blessings. So don't, a lot of people take those three verses as a negative verse. But you got to realize this, it's not just a negative verse, it's also a positive verse. God is for perfection, balanced. So he shows you a negative side, but also a positive side. As much strength and priority you give to the negative side on that verse, you should do the same thing on the positive side. If you haven't been doing that, that's probably the reason why you're always depressed. You're miserable because you don't believe how good God is to you, how beautiful and loving and great God is to you. You have to reap. Look, all those times you attended our church, you got to realize this, you have to reap it. That's a blessing. All those times that you came in and then uh, no one was around soul winning and then it was just me, you, and then a few others, you have to reap that. A lot of the times where pastor was barking at you like a dog, set this one up, set that one up, and then you're running around like a chicken head cut off, you know, and you're like screaming, leave me alone, ah! you know. You have to reap that. You have to read the, reap the reward for that. All, uh, all the times that you've helped out fellowshipping with people when they mistreated you, guess what? You have to reap that as well. You have to reap that as well. It's not just you have to reap skipping church, skipping Bible reading. You also have to reap for reading the Bible and coming to church. So think about that as well. That will encourage you. Now, there's something that I also want to say concerning the law of sowing and reaping. Go to Hosea chapter 8. Hosea 8. I want to cover the whole Bible study just on law of sowing and reaping, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give a shout out, but I remember... Uh, Dr. Song Lee, he's the one responsible for translating our King James Bible into Korean. But his son, Nathan, uh, when I went inside his room, there's something that really spoke to me when I went inside his room. In his door, in, in his bedroom door, he put uh, a post over there that contained the laws of sowing and reaping. So there are several things concerning the law of sowing and reaping. One day I'll probably give a devotional topic on that. I bought a little booklet on that about sowing and reaping. It's a really great book. It's life-changing. You understand within the laws of sowing and reaping, there are several laws. One, when you, uh, when you sow, you have to reap an equal amount, whether it be good or bad. Another thing is you will reap what another person has sown. That's another law. So somebody else sowed the bad seed in the family. Guess what? Your next generation, your child will reap that one, even though it's not the first generation. But it's the same thing with the good thing. The pastor ran this ministry, worked hard to uh, create a good fellowship environment, for example. And you did not do that yourself, but you're reaping that blessing what the pastor and others before you have sown. See, so you reaped what you have not sown. That's another law as well. 
Another law concerning the law of sowing and reaping is that you reap more than you sow. Now this one you want to hear, okay? You reap more than you sow. So I'm going to show you that verse. Look at Hosea chapter 8. Look at verse 7. For they have sown the wind, and they shall reap the what? Whirlwind. Wow. So if you just sow a little bit of wind, guess what? You get a whirlwind in return. So you got to be careful. Sin is not something to joke with. You sow a little bit of sin, and it's going to be a lot more than you think. I'm sure Adam and Eve finally realized that when they ate a fruit off a tree, right? See? Disobedience can have a heavy price to it. But here's another thing. It's the same thing with your spiritual walk. That's why it should be encouraging to you that, oh, pastor, you know, I only went this many times to church. I only led these many souls to salvation. I only passed out this amount of tracts. I didn't cover that much of the Bible. I only memorized this much. Hey, you're going to reap more than what you've sown, too. That's a law. So let that encourage you. So I'm going to give a devotional study on that one day. But Law of Sowing and Reaping, there's a little booklet on that. I would highly recommend you to buy that book and read it. It will change your life. Okay, let's return to our main text. All right, I'm finally getting off this passage. So let's close it with verse 9 now for the Law of Sowing and Reaping. Now notice right here that verse 7 and 8, it sounded negative, the first half, right? But then you'll notice the second half, 8 and 9, it's all the positive now. And let us not be weary in well-doing. Ah, so all this sowing you're doing, it's well-doing, right? You're doing it well. It's well-doing. Whatever you sow, well-doing. You know what the Bible says right here? Let's not be weary. Can I encourage you, church? Someone should preach a message off of this. Don't be weary in what you're doing. Do not be weary. Keep sowing and don't be weary. I know it's so hard praying for the same person to get saved, praying for the same person to come back to church, praying for the Lord to provide something more for this church and it hasn't happened yet. But let us not be weary in well-doing. I know you're witnessing to the same person over and over again. I know you're talking to the same brother and sister trying to motivate and encourage them. I know that you're trying to preach and teach and uh, direct the church and it seems like people don't get the memo, but let's not be weary in well-doing. For notice right here, in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Ah, so if you don't faint, you're going to reap because it's going to come in due season. Due season. Why didn't God answer my prayer yet? It's not due season season. It's not the perfect time in God's perfect plan. That's why. God knows when to grow the YouTube subscribers online. Amen? God knows when to send the necessary people into our church. Amen? God knows when we needed San Jose Bible Baptist Church in this liberal area. Amen? God knew when you were supposed to write the uh, find the right person to marry. Amen? God knows when it's the right time when you'll get your own building and a lot of people in church. Amen? It's due season. If you go earlier or later, it will be off of God's perfect plan. And even though it's a good plan, it's not a perfect plan. You want the most perfect in the plan in God's timetable. You, so due season. So that's why you shouldn't be weary. So when your flesh complains that, oh, you can't take it anymore, oh, it's too hard, just tell yourself this. It's not the right time yet. It's going to happen soon. It's going to happen soon. My time will come. So keep it up. It's not my time yet. It'll come. Tell your flesh that. It'll come. Whenever the flesh cries, ah, ah, then just tell your stupid flesh, it'll come in time, all right? Hush up. Shut up. Be quiet, all right? It'll come in time. Tell your flesh that. It will come, what, if we faint not? That is so important. And how many times has this preacher felt like fainting? And if I fainted, what would have happened? We would not have gotten the people in our church today. We would not have gotten that many people online today. Uh, we probably wouldn't have gotten more souls saved in this area if, what, I fainted. 
You know one thing I notice? At the verge of fainting, that's when due season just comes right around the corner. That's good. So don't faint. All right. The three best verses in the, Bible, in the Bible of the book of Galatians. We covered them. The three best verses in the book of Galatians. Now we finished.